Hi, I'm Nicholas Seminario, founder of Dark Angel Company. This podcast is to share the untold stories of just a few of the many people battling mental illnesses in this world. If you're in need of a little inspiration to keep fighting or to feel less alone in your battle, keep listening and share to spread awareness. This is the Dark Angel Podcast. Hey everyone, welcome back to another episode of the Dark Angel Podcast. It's me and Max again today. Um, Today we're going to be talking about the topic of failure and what it has to do with mental health and just the topic of failure in general. Um, I think this is something we all deal with maybe on a day-to-day basis or, you know, just on these long goals that we're trying to set for ourselves. I think a common theme is that through failure, it's a negative topic. A lot of the times, right, we bring together these negative concepts and think failure is always a negative thing. It's not something that is easy to deal with. There's so many different aspects of failure, right? It could be something as little as, you know, not achieving one thing you wanted to do in a day, all the way to having a business that you own failing or a family that's failing, a relationship, whatever it is. Failure is a large spectrum. And it covers more than just attempting something, you know, it yeah. can happen, you know, you in things that, you know, you didn't realize you enjoyed, yes. you know, and you, those things, you lose those things Yes, and that feels like failing. Exactly. You know? Exactly. Before we get into that, I just want to go over with you. Is there anything that's been going on, you know, that we haven't discussed, you know, in your life? Um, any, any new updates, you know, just to, you know, bring anyone in? No, no, nothing really. What All about right. you? Good to know. Um, not really. Everything's been, you know, pretty boring. I'm starting school up in another few weeks. I guess probably when I release this, it'll be around the first week of school. You know, I've been really trying to yet again push everything. And for all of you guys listening, I just want to say thank you again. I really appreciate everything. And if you guys could like, share, comment, and subscribe to everything that we're doing, it's greatly appreciated. And yeah, without further ado, let's uh, let's get into it. So what is something you deal with you know, to do with failure? What is something that disturbs you or bothers you with failure? So I think with failure, it's not so much like the act or the the actual failure happening that bothers me. I think it's more like the emotions that come after, okay. you know, the, the self-doubt, obviously. Yeah. Um, you get discouraged and it can kind of derail any progress you've made, right? It's very easy to have failure slow you down in any aspect. Um, and that for me is personally like what's hard about failure. It's not so much the act of like getting it wrong. Um, I like figuring things out, but sometimes, you know, it's how, when you go through something so many times, right. Or you, you were hoping for an outcome, right. And you think you've got something figured out that you've been working on or something like that. And it doesn't go the way that you thought it would, after you've put in all that work or you've put in a lot of time on something or, you know, you put in, you've put in a lot of work on this podcast, you know? Yeah. And like, obviously you want to see it succeed. Yeah. A hundred percent. And there's times that even when like the, not even like anything bad could happen. Yeah. You know, you could be exactly where you were yesterday and you could just doubt what you're doing, yes. you know? And I feel like that's the challenging part about it. Yeah, definitely. And I think that, this is a perfect topic to talk about with it. You know, my my company in itself, right? It's like, you know, we've talked about this in past episodes. You set these goals and these expectations and when you don't reach them, you do feel like a failure. You know, there's been times where I've said to myself, oh, really? Like, that's all you could do? You know, you're, you're not successful. You know, and like, there's plenty of times where I've self-doubted and there's plenty of times where I felt like a big failure. And you know, what I kind of do to combat that is look at the progress I've made. Um, And I know you said something that really resonates with me also is that that feeling after the fact, right? It's not so much how you feel immediately after, it's kind of those those days after and it's what you do with that feeling that will make or break the situation, I feel. You know, I, I would say, like, this is a perfect example, right? I went from posting one episode a week and my views and everything were going up, which was great. And I wound up falling off a little bit. I couldn't keep up with posting every week and it it did hurt my downloads. It did hurt my my viewers. And that was something where I felt like a failure, right? And 
I didn't know what to do immediately, you know, and and the simple answer was to post more, right? That That's the simple answer. But it wasn't easy to do that. I was working every single day um, and I had a hard time getting guests, right? So that was a failure in my book, right? That was something I looked at as a failure. I was like, why can't I do this? Why can't I go get more people, you know? And it was a struggle. It was a struggle. And then I finally got over that part of being like, oh, I'm a failure. And instead of looking at it negatively, I said, okay, this is something that was thrown in my way. What is a way I can overcome this, right? And we talk all the time and, you know, we kind of put our brains together and we were like, look, you know, I was like, Max, like you're, you know, one of my best friends. I think we talk well together. How would you feel about, you know, coming and being a part of this? And you were like, yeah, I I would love that. And we solved that failure. You know, now we're able to post every week again. And all I've learned from every time I have failed, you know, and I say that with quotation marks, because if you look at your failures as something that is only going to negatively affect you, instead of looking how you can turn those failures into victories, um, I feel that's the best way to approach these things. If I just sat there and said, oh, whatever, I'm just going to keep posting every other week and I'm going to accept defeat then where would I be? You know, where would I be five years from now? We don't know, right? If all I did was take these losses in life and just accept them and not try and change it, then yeah, you would be a failure in a sense, right? But instead, I'm looking at it like, let me take what I've been given and let's see how I can better that situation. And like I said, you just kind of have to come up with things and that's what we did. And now this is what we're doing right now. You know, how would you say that failure, you know, impacted your life, right? Because that was more on me, right? This is something that, not that you don't care about, right? At the time, this was just something you enjoyed listening to, right? Yeah. You know, at so. The end of the, yeah, it's, at the end of the day, it's still, you know, it's your company and it's, it's your vision. It's your idea. You know what I mean? I get what you're saying, right? Yeah. But in the sense of, you're sort of asking like what kind of failure personally? Yeah. Uh, baseball up okay. to this point, just between injuries and it's not really how I saw it going, you know? Um, I and, don't think I'd trade it for yeah. anything. You okay. know, it definitely, it's definitely been difficult at times, mm. you know? But like, not in a way that I regret any of it, Okay, you know? Yeah. And like, I think that's a huge part of it too, is in the t- in, when you were talking about failure, right? Not really calling it failure. I think too often when you get something wrong or you fail at something or, you know, you flunk out of a class or, you know, you get into a car accident, you get a speeding ticket, you know, anything that kind of just makes you feel like you failed at some expectation, right? I feel like the the thought is, you know, oh, you know, I did it wrong, I failed. And it, in your mind, I feel like that almost makes it feel like an end road. Okay, yeah. You know, and I feel... That if if you were to change how you looked at that failure, as not so much like okay, it's failure, it's over, and rather look at it like something positive, right? Because in those moments, you're being told what you could do differently, yeah, right. And it might not be serious. You might not have to. You know, it might not make a difference to you, really, in the long run. But those moments when you fail are ultimately you're being told what you need to change right yeah with baseball like i tore my elbow and what i was trying to do was obviously pitch and part of pitching is you have to throw hard and what in what i was doing i was damaging my elbow right and so i didn't i learned it unfortunately you know in an unlucky way but i figured it out you know i had to change some things up mechanically throwing wise and that's a rather plain example, mm-hmm. but you get what I'm saying. Yeah. So, you know, taking that example, I think that's a perfect example. How would you say you turned that failure around, right? Because for those of you who don't know, me and Max played baseball together in high school. Uh, Max was a phenomenal picture, pitcher. He still is. You know, it's just he's getting back to where he was. Um, but phenomenal pitcher, wound up getting hurt, and he wasn't able to live up to his dreams. He wanted to play college ball and eventually go pro um and that was shattered so 
of course that's looked at as a failure, you know, not from I, like look, I don't look at you as a failure for that. I appreciate you know? that. And but it's so easy to look at yourself as a failure for that. You know, yeah. and I would do the I've kind of in this yeah, I'm kind of in a similar boat, you know, like with my elbow and my shoulder. I got hurt you also. Went through, yeah, similar stuff in high yeah. school. I remember that. Yeah, and I look, I wasn't as, you know, into it as Max where I wanted to go pro. I, w- I would have loved to play college ball, you know, I was throwing the ball hard and you still enjoyed it. You yeah. know, it was still something you had high expectations yeah. for of yourself, yes. you know. Yes. And when I got hurt, I also felt like a failure and you know, I felt hopeless, right? It was like this feeling of this hopeless failure, right? And you know, I didn't do anything to kind of salvage it, right? Instead of, you know, what I've learned now is to learn from those failures and better yourself, I kind of let it consume me and I just let it take over, right? I didn't try and better my injury. I kind of just let it, whatever. I went to physical therapy, didn't do anything. And, you know, so what would you say you're doing different to better these failures? It's definitely still a work in progress. Mm -hmm. Um, I'm not where I want to be by any means. Yeah. Um, And since coming home, I'd say it's been a little bit more difficult in terms of like doing that because there's more family and friends here. So you end up giving like giving more time to that too, you know, because I didn't have all of my family and friends in Florida. Yeah. You know, so that's been an adjustment because. It was, I had a year without it and like my routines changed the way I did things changed. But I think it's just, I think so much of it is kind of maintaining as much of an optimistic like mindset as that, as corny as that may sound. Just the ability to not let yourself get down makes a huge difference. Yeah. And that what, once I can kind of get control, not control, but like I have an idea of how to get myself from those discouraging moments, you know, when you feel like you haven't done it right to those moments of, okay, I might not have done it right up until now. Okay. You know, like just, yeah. just tweaking it a little bit. So it's not so negative and you're not looking at what's happened in the past so poorly, right? Yeah. Cause you're not going to ever be able to change it. Yeah, no, exactly. You know? it happens. Being upset yeah. about it doesn't ever accomplish anything. You just end up feeling bad. Yeah, exactly. Because like you said, it, it's in the past. It happened, right? So, there, you have two options. You could let it beat you or you turn around and you go and beat it. Yeah. Um, and that's kind of how I live my life. I'm somebody who, I'm a competitor. I love competing. So I kind of look at my failures like that, right? I look at it as an opponent. So am I going to let failure win or am I going to win? And don't get me wrong, I don't win every time. Like I said, there's plenty of times where I do fail. But it's what you do with that failure is what matters. Yeah, go ahead. I don't I don't know how, you know, you would say you go about doing that. Like how do you combat failure? Cuz look, nobody's perfect. Everybody in this world fails. There's and no then, person who and doesn't. It all, it, it's going to affect you every time. Yeah. You know, there's Oh yeah. It's I need to go back to it again, but like with with baseball, you know, you just have to find the little moments in like I guess the mundane stuff every day that you enjoy right like when i throw a baseball everything else in my mind just stops yeah you know and all i can all that i focus on all that's in my head is the baseball you know coming mm-hmm. out of my hand and that's what i look forward to yeah. i might not have a great day you know but i've learned that like appreciating the ability to kind of go through the process of it is what makes a difference because the failure is going to happen. The disappointment's going to happen. You know, I'm not very good right now. Yeah. Right? In terms, like I, I throw, I'm slow. Like I throw slow. Yeah. You know, um, but to get back to where I used to be, I can't get, keep doing those poor things, those poor habits and letting that continue to beat me, you know? Yeah. No. I, and I get that. Do you think, you know, being told what failure is as a kid, do you think what, we think of it now is something that's heavier than it should be? Or yeah. do you think as a kid, you know, because I remember being a kid and I, I've always been someone who's hard on myself, right? Yeah. And I feel like you're very similar. I would say like almost purpose driven. Yeah. In a yeah. way, like I, I feel lost if I don't have like a, something I'm working towards. Yeah, exactly. And I completely get that, you know, and I remember, you know, 
just always, not always feeling like a failure, but there were things I did and I felt like there was a lot of pressure that I put on myself and I gave that word failure more power than it deserved. You're saying when you were younger. Yeah. Yeah. Would you say that's something similar for you? I think, yeah. But mine more so in like the way I guess I learned to react to it. Okay. It was poor. Okay. And yeah. Maybe, and it that developed later on. Okay. Like in the beginning, I feel like as a kid, you're naturally optimistic. You get up yeah. and you go again. Mm-hmm. Some point along the way, though, I feel like that changes. Okay. Yeah. Um, yes. And I, I, think, I can't speak for you, but that's at least how I felt. Yeah. I would say it's similar for me. Um, in a sense, it's almost like, kind of backwards um when I was younger I was super hard on myself and I was always like a kid who was always in my head and you know specifically with baseball this is that was my life growing up right I've been playing baseball since I'm three or four years old right so I've done it that's the only sport I liked I tried football basketball failed at all those and I didn't want to keep trying I was just terrible um and you know I was in my head a lot. I used to go to baseball, you know, I would be nervous. And once I got over that, that's when I started kind of staring failure in the face, right? If that makes sense, I could, let me get more into it. I used to be really in my head. I used to overthink, right? So let's say I'm on the mound, right? I had a hard time finding control when I was younger. I was always high because I was throwing hard everything was missing high. And then I would get in my head, oh, I can't pitch. What am I doing? What am I doing? And then my coaches would just be like, all right, let's take him out. You know, and then that's kind of a cycle that I got into. And not that like I was showing emotion because that was one thing I never did. I never showed emotion on the mound. I was always very composed because I would look at it like the other team could see through me. So I never wanted to show any emotion, you know, and act like I was always on my A game. And, you know, but my head was my issue. So I was always really thinking deeply into these, these games that didn't have to be, it should have been fun. And the other weird thing, my dad, you know, cause my dad went to all my games. He was never someone who was hard on me either. You know, you get some of these parents who are like, oh, you need to be doing better. You need to be do- to 10 year olds who are yeah. screaming at their 10 year old kid where like, come on, they're playing baseball at 10 yeah. years old, you know, let them have fun. Yeah. And you know, my dad never did that. He was never that dad that was screaming at me. He was always like, look, he's like, look, you know what you're capable of? Just go out there and give it your best. You know? And it was like, I was the one who was hard on myself. I was putting that pressure and that stress on myself. Um, and then I got to like 13 years old and I started saying to myself, I was like, I know I'm good. Like I throw the ball hard. You know, I got some good off speed. What am I doing? Right. What am I doing to myself? Why am I accepting defeat? Why am I accepting failure? And once I kind of had that conversation with myself, that's kind of when things started to turn around, specifically with baseball. And then I became one of the most dominant pitchers, you know, on my team. I was starting for my middle school team. I started, I think we had 10 games. I started like five or six of them pitching, you know, and I had to sat, sit out one of them because I had detention, long story, but... <laughs> um, you know, so I became a really dominant pitcher. I was starting when I was in seventh grade. You know, I started a few games and it was just because I stopped looking at myself as a failure. I think it's also a confidence thing. I, I don't know how you would, you know, go about that. No, that's actually, I like that you brought that up. I didn't really think about that so much. But I remember I that's kind of where I found my mindset Okay, in, in life was through baseball yeah. and like, how I approached pitching in a game was kind of, I guess, how I ended up approaching life. And it's changed, you know, because I haven't been able to get on a mound. And I'm sorry the to interrupt you. Of, sorry. What's up? One second. There's no feeling like being on a mound, right? No. When you're on a mound and you're there's... complete control. Yeah. The game's everything. in your hands. Everybody's watching and it's it's There's special. a moment. Yeah. And like that's... I get like a nice moment of peace on yes. that mound. When I step on, I take a sign, I throw a ball. You yeah, know, hit my spot. Like that's that's peace for me. Like Fulfilling. that's yeah. Like that is what I like, right? And so, in being passionate about that, it made me want to get better. Okay, right. And through that, obviously, I failed a bunch. I don't think I could throw a strike until I was like twelve or thirteen. And, and then that's by so like funny. Fourteen or fifteen, I could throw it wherever. That's like me. Know? Same thing. Yeah. <laughs> um. I had no. I could. You know. 
I had no idea where the ball was going. It's confidence is tricky because I think you have to approach it the right way. Yeah. If you approach confidence and it's faked and you're just saying it to other people to almost boost your confidence, right? Because you, you know, you don't feel confident, but you're saying it in hopes. I guess you're trying to convince yourself that yeah. you're confident. Then I, I feel like it may come off as arrogance. Yeah. Um, yep. Versus on the flip side. You don't have any confidence and, you know, that that fear of failure kind of takes over, right? Yeah. You end up failing yeah, because you're so worried about it and that's all you can think about. I think you, there's a, I guess it's almost like a quiet confidence mm-hmm. in yes, yourself exactly. and what you can do. And it, it's important because I feel like without confidence, you're going to second guess every move. Yeah. You're not going to confidently fully finish out your moves in whatever you're doing, right? Could be throwing, for me, ba- right, go back to baseball, throwing a certain pitch in a certain situation, right, in a certain location, mm-hmm. right? If you don't do that confidently and then you go back on and look on it later, right, that might have been the right situation. You just didn't execute it, right? You have to be, con- like, the confidence in your ability to make decisions for yourself, I think, is important. Yeah, and I, I think these two words really do go hand in hand, confidence and failure, right? Because what you do with that failure, and I'm going to say this again, is based off of, you know, your actions. You're going to be doing something whether you fail or not, right? If if you fail, there's always going to be an action, you know, preceding it, and there's going to be an action following it, right? So it's what you do after that really matters. And if you try and learn from those failures, is when it's really important, and that just makes you even stronger of a person. Um, you know, I'm going to bring up another example. I guess it was about uh, two or three years ago. Um, it was like 2019 or 2020, somewhere around there. Um, I started playing chess, and this is a game where it's pure mind, right? There's yeah, nothing else you're memorization using. Memorization of moves. and yeah. yeah, it's it's all memory. It's all strategy. You're doing nothing physical right there's no physical aspect to it you're not lifting weights you're not throwing a ball and this is a huge thing where i learned not only is it a brain game but it's also strengthening your mind and when i say strengthening your mind i don't mean intelligence wise i mean physical strength wise right like specifically with failure and confidence and self-doubt it gives you a different way to think about things right you're you're thinking like a chess game you're thinking three game three moves ahead you know something i learned while playing chess i I started like i said a few years ago um after my first month of playing my uncle said to me you know he's a big chess guy too he loves chess he's like why don't we go start some tournaments now i've never played chess until that year and then a month later we're going and doing chess tournaments And I was like, okay, you know, super nervous. I go in and the first time I sit down, I'm playing the number one ranked guy in New York. (laughs) Yeah. So I'm sitting there. Wow. Terrible chess player. Oh, I got creamed. It wasn't even close. It wasn't even like remotely close. But I had to sit there and I was I was nervous. You know, I was like. I'm sitting across from one of the best players in New York at the time or Long Island, whatever it was, you know, but insanely good. And I'm a new player. I'm rated like seven, eight hundred, you know, for those of you who play chess, you'll understand that. For those of you who don't, it's, it's like low. the preschool of chess yeah. or the, yeah, the elementary school of chess. And I'm sitting there. I'm like, I am going to get smoked by this guy. And, you know, I was like, you know, what? let me give it a, let me give it a fight. I tried my best. It wasn't even close. Um, But after that, I said, well, this guy's been playing since he's five years old. He's around 30. He's been playing for a while, right? So he's had a lot more practice than I have. Instead of looking at it as like, oh, this is is stupid. I'm never going to be able to win, you know, whatever. I took it as, you know what? That that kind of fired me up. I was like, oh, I'm not going to accept that defeat, you know. It gave you the confidence that you could get to that level and beat him. Yeah, exactly. And look, it takes a lot of practice, a lot of... I still wouldn't be able to beat him today, you know. But if I really work towards it and try to, who knows, you know. And I'm not saying it would happen tomorrow. It might take years, right? But 
to have that ability, you know, where I was going with the story was eventually we wound up doing tournaments for eight or nine months. I wound up getting my rating up in to the 1500s, which is relatively high yeah, online. Um, I don't know what my uh, in-person rating is. I don't think I played enough games to accurately have a rating. Um, but I wound up going up against some really, really strong players, some 1600s, 1700s, 1800s, you know, and there were a few games where I drew them, I beat them, and it was like, that was a great accomplishment. I could have sat there, been intimidated, and just accepted failure before we even started, but instead I was like, no, I'm going to fight for this, and if I win, I win, and if not, oh well, I tried. And that that's what I've learned what failure is. It's this this pre-notion of accepting defeat before it happens. I feel like we go into a lot of things already saying, you I'm not good enough. Out of yes, it. exactly. Yeah. And that's that's something I learned. I learned how to be strong in my head and say, no, I'm not going to accept defeat before it happens. Why would I? Right? I'm I'm the best. You know, and this is another thing we've talked about. It's that confidence. And, you know, look, and we said this, there's that fine line between arrogance and confidence, right? But nobody hears what's going on in your head. So if you're saying to yourself, I'm the best, I'm not going to lose, I can do this, fake it till you make it, man. Believe it. Because... You are capable of doing these things, and I I am capable, right? I was able to go sit down in seven months of playing chess, and I was able to beat these guys who've been playing five, ten years, you know? The first time I beat this really strong player, he was rated 15-25. An older guy, really, really good guy. He's, I believe he's 80 years old. Um, An amazing chess player, you know, like, super calculated. He played, I believe, the English. You know, I didn't ever go against the English. I've never, you know... Played against it's it. I didn't chess study. Strategy it. for people. Yeah, it's an opening, and I had the black pieces, so you know I was going against white. I was already kind of you know they always say white has the advantage in chess. You get to go first. You kind of get to decide how the the game goes, and you know it was a really really tough game. He wound up blundering in the end game, and I wound up winning. And you know ever since then, I was like, I am capable, right? I I have that ability to play at this level and I loved it 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 retrained my brain yet again you know I was able to realize all it is is that confidence you have to have faith in yourself you know in turn so say if you were to go back to a point where you didn't have that confidence right how would you go about building it up because it's not an overnight thing definitely Um, not I think it's a big big issue in terms of failure, yeah. right? Is you lose that confidence sometimes before you even start, like you yes. said. Yep. Um, like when I played that first guy, I sat there and I was like, I'm going to lose. You know, I didn't even give myself the chance. Yeah. And, you know, look. And even the way I'm saying it right now, yeah, I wouldn't have won even if I tried my hardest. It's even that statement. Like, yes, of course I wouldn't have. But to have that confidence and that belief is a whole different story. Yeah, I guess confidence is the belief that you can almost figure it out even yeah, if you don't know. Exactly. You know? And I, I would, to answer your question, I would say I would go about, you know, building up that confidence by really self-talking to yourself and not just pulling it out of thin air, right? If I just said to myself, oh yeah, I could be the greatest player of chess of all time, right? And putting no work in and not playing. Yeah, no, that's not realistic, you know, but be confident in your knowledge, Right. I played so much. I was playing some days, eight hours a day. You know, like I would sit there five days a week playing. I played 40 hours of chess, like nonstop. It's a job. Yeah. So I had the confidence behind it because I was playing so much. I was putting in time. I was doing puzzles, you know, and that's where I got the confidence. So, so I guess you got I would it say through the preparation. Yeah. I, I guess I would say by, you know, getting knowledge of the the subject that you're looking to be confident, right? I guess if it was a sport, I would say by practicing, right? Like I used to do pitching lessons and I would put the time in. I definitely should have put more time in, but yeah, me too. You know, and look, that's another thing like you said, we can't go back and change that, right? So it's how we change it now, and that's something I look at as where oh, I should have put more time in. Now, let me change that for something now. And I I would say that's this. So how would you say your past affects your confidence and the notion of failure? I would say I'm a fairly confident person, you know, and at least I try and come off as fairly confident. But that's only because of the amount of work and everything I've done. Um, And I'm not afraid of failure. 
I, in the sense of sorry to interrupt you, but in no, the sense good. of more of like if you were at a, if your past right affected it in a negative way. Okay. Say there were things in your past that didn't you weren't I guess happy with right? Yeah. Like you didn't like the way things went. How would that affect confidence and failure, and how would you go about not letting it affect? Well, your I, confidence and I, the ability to get through failure. Okay, yeah, I think a great example is my anxiety. That's something that in the past I've struggled with, and it's something I'm not super confident in because it's hard to deal with. So that is something where I'm still staring failure in the face. I'm not letting it beat me, but I'm continuously trying to better that aspect of my confidence. Um, I would say that's definitely a place where failure and I are in a, in a battle, you know, and, and like I said, it's not something I give up on and I'm a competitor, so that's not something I'm going to let win. So how has anxiety of the past affected your confidence now in dealing with it? Yeah, I guess I would say in social situations, that's where I'm lacking in confidence and it's a little nerve wracking because of way the way things have gone in the past. Yeah, yeah, yes, okay. definitely. And but like I said, the way to kind of combat that is a gaining knowledge around it, right? So I've learned about anxiety. I've learned about what causes it, and I've learned why I have it. So to to have that knowledge and to apply it to now, and using little tools and tricks and tips to help is what I do to kind of aid that, and that's what lets me say no to failure, I guess would, would be the the answer. Okay. How how would you say if you were to answer that same question, what would your past have to do with your confidence slash failure now? I'd say through repetitiveness. I just feel I know this is everyone to some extent in something, right? And this is my that's my way of telling myself that that's just kind of how it is. And to like so it doesn't affect me as much um in my confidence. But with baseball um, and the injuries that I've had to rehab from and just the process there, I've had to go back to step one so many times that it's discouraging some days. You know, it feels like you're doing it with no end in sight when you want it to, when you want to reach a goal, right? Not necessarily end, but I want to get it to a certain point and I keep having to go back to almost step, step one, step zero, whatever. That it'll affect me in those days where I have bad days throwing, eating wise, right? Because a huge component is just eating right, eating a lot. Um, it'll kill my appetite. But a whole it's a whole bunch of different ways, right? In whichever way that emotion comes out that day, right? It could be through stress, anger, um, being overwhelmed with t- things to do. And I've noticed that it can affect more than just baseball, too. But I, I've gone about not letting it affect me by just trying to maintain maintain some sense of perspective without trying to think about it too much. Yeah. You know, because mm-hmm. then you start to overthink. Yes, definitely. And that's that's not always a good thing either. No. Um, but yeah, I would definitely say there's plenty of times where we all fail. Um, I mean, you could even look at it as like a silly example from work, right? You didn't do something correctly at work. Like I work at a ski shop. I didn't know how to tune skis, right? So I had to learn. Those people may look at me as a failure because I don't know how to tune skis, right? But instead of me looking as it, looking at it as a failure, I can look at it as, okay, now I know another piece of information to take me even further in life. And that's one thing I also wanted to bring up is I feel like there's shame associated with failure yeah. in social situations. Like there's almost this idea that you can't fail and you're bad at what you do if you yeah. fail and you're a bad person if you do something wrong. And I think that if things change to be more forgiving of the idea that people don't know everything and up, even up to like a certain point, you know, you you almost can't even hold kids responsible for things, yeah. right? And I even, I feel like we don't do that well enough as a society. So how um, would you go about changing that? Because I, I agree 100%. I can only control me at the yeah, end of the day. Yeah, of course. You know, so in that, 
in that context, I just have to do what I can to positively affect the people around me right? yeah. and hope that they, I affect, you know, I can affect one person who can affect one, you know, and it's mm-hmm. just a chain reaction. Right? Yeah. But I don't know. Yeah. I mean, the way you kind of describe that, like the shame that goes around it, I, I like that word a lot. And I think it's so true. There's a lot of shame around failure. And I, not that it should be praised, right? It shouldn't be like, oh yeah, you're a failure, great. Like, uh, there's, I feel like collectiveness. Yes, like you should exactly. feel like you're being supported. Yes. Right? Yes. Like even with friends, I feel like sometimes you almost can't share certain things like failures because people, not that they don't pick you up and they, you know, but they don't know, they're, it's like, oh, well, whatever. Yeah. You know, it's like. You know, they almost don't want to talk about it And sometimes. then they look at you differently. Yeah, it's like, oh, well, if he can't do that, you know. And some of that is just internal. You know, yeah. some of that is Our self-doubt. Anxieties. Yeah, exactly. It's the self-doubt. Yep. Yeah, I, I, think, I, don't know. I think the way, you know, to kind of go about it is just kind of being kinder. You know, that, that it, it's such a simple solution, right? You know, if you're someone who is super judgmental and i feel like we all are we're human right it's it's something so easy to go to i think it comes from almost judging yourself too exactly like you hold yourself to such a high standard and then when you don't meet that standard you think everyone else is kind of right there with you yes. and you just feel negative yes 100% and that's that's something that's rough right it's like it start it really does start with yourself right if you're self doubting yourself and you're judging yourself of course you're going to judge other people, right? You're judging you're you're your own worst critic. And that's another reason why I feel like we give in to failure and I feel like we don't do things because of that. Because of the worry of failure. I feel like we're scared to go start something. If I gave in to my failures, I would and and the worry of failures, I would have never started this, right? Of course it's so easy to think about a failing business, right? Oh, if it doesn't work, what if I don't make any sales? What if I don't get any listeners? It's almost like it's your gut instinct. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, and that's the other thing I feel like we all have to change. You know, we're, not all of us, you know, I don't want to generalize, but at least me, and I I don't want to speak for you either, but... No, I'm right there with you. I feel like I'm wired to to go right to failure. You know, I'm wired to think... Your first thought is, your first thought is to protect yourself. Yeah, yes. You know, which it makes sense, but sometimes you just have to... I guess push through. Yeah. And that's in those situations. Yes. At least. Exactly. And that's what I did, you know, and I, like I, I say, like I would never have been where I am today if I gave in and didn't kind of explore these new territories and accept the possibility of failure. Yeah. So in terms of failure, I feel like there's two different, there's the more general, right? Like, okay, I have these goals and I want to reach these goals. But what about like the mental things? Like I want to do this differently or I don't, enjoy this right you tell yourself you're going to change something mentally right or about yourself and then you don't change it right like say you're going to go to the gym every so yeah. often or you're going to do this new habit and then you don't do it and then like how do would you say that kind of failure has affected you and how would you say you've gotten through it to get to the point where you are now not physically but more so I guess with like mental peace of mind and stuff like that. Yeah. I guess it kind of ties in with confidence. Yeah, definitely. Um, I think confidence is a huge aspect of it, right? Having that belief in yourself of being able to it. I think, you know, a gym, the gym is a perfect example. It's something simple to wrap our heads around. Consistency also, right? So those days where you don't feel like doing something, those are the most important days to do it. You know, yesterday I kind of experienced that um, or two days ago. I told myself I needed to edit. Right. So I said I was going to sit down, do some TikTok videos, and I really didn't feel like doing it. And I was so close to not doing it. Um, But I said, no, I'm going to sit down. This is what I preach. This is what I got to practice. I'm going to sit down. I'm going to do an hour and a half of editing. And I knocked it all out. I did it. And I was so glad after. It's really, like I said, it's that battle between that success or that failure. And whether you want to let it win or whether you want to win. Um, And I don't like other people winning. I like winning. So I look at things as a competition. So I guess I would say whatever motivates you is a a huge factor also, right? So I'd say there's three things, confidence, consistency, and a motivator. Yeah. 
So and the confidence comes through the preparation and knowing yourself, yes. knowing what motivates you, right? Yes. So they all, they're not all separate things. They yeah. all tie together. Yes, exactly. Um, the other thing with failure too is I saw this the other day, right? Failure normally means you have to change something, right? Or improve yeah. in one thing, right? Yeah. In order to get past that failure or in order to make that change, you need to almost kind of let go yeah. of a little bit of something in a way. If that makes sense. Like yes. you have to let go of whatever's holding you back from that change. Yeah. Right? Yeah. You have to figure out what that is, right? In baseball, you know, mechanically, I wasn't able to do certain things because of limitations that I had physically. Yeah. Right? And I had to figure out what those were and I had to change I had to address those. Mm-hmm. Right. And those limitations are, might not be physical for someone, right? With yeah. the gym, it might be the anxiety of going to a gym packed yes. with people at 5.30 after work yep. where you're not going to get any equipment and now you just feel like Trapped. an idiot yeah. you know, because you, you are not comfortable in that environment yet and you don't know anybody and yes. you're not confident in the way you look, which is why you're going there to begin with. Yeah. For most people, right, I'd say mm-hmm. is, 100%. is a huge driving factor. Yeah. Yeah. You know, not the driving factor, but a huge driving yeah. factor. And like... It affects you a lot. Yes. You know, it, it changes It changes how you do it, right? You might go in there, you might only go for 20 minutes now. And then you come out and you're like, oh, I went to the gym, but I didn't really do go anything. as hard yeah. as I could have. And then you feel like you failed. Yeah. You know? And that's that's a huge, huge battle. Yeah. You know, It's definitely people. a mental battle. Yeah. Definitely. Like, and that's where I think that mental strength comes in again. You know, it's building up your strength mentally. You know, physical strength is one thing, right? It's like you said, and that's why people are going to the gym. You want to get stronger. But another thing you can also do is improve your mental strength. Um, And I think that goes hand in hand with what we're talking about today. I really do. It's something so important to have that mental strength. You know, I've gotten to the point, or at least I'd like to think I do for the most part. I've stopped caring what people think as much. You know, I don't let that have power over me and I don't let people decide that I'm a failure. If I want to decide I'm a failure, that's fine. But I'm not going to let other people determine that for me. In terms of that, right? Yeah. And like thinking about other people and what they think. One thing that I've noticed about myself, at least, I care more about other people than what the, I care more about what people think about me when I notice that I'm caring more about what they're doing. Okay. The second I stop caring about what everyone else is doing... I don't care what they think about me. Okay. Right? So and kind it's of not an and to absolute. That, what, do you mean? what do you mean when uh, you see other people are doing something? Like, give me an example. If I go to the gym and I go there to enjoy my workout mm-hmm. and enjoy the time that I have to listen to music and get a good workout in, I don't think about what people are thinking about what I'm doing. Okay. Right? And then give an example for the other side. You can, like, talk about mentally? Like, when you're worried about what people are thinking. Um, I think that, I think it was, that is more mental. Yeah, right, like you're talking about like a mental habit. No, just in general, like, like a gym what's kind of? yeah. So like, what would a case of you in the gym be where you're like, oh, these people are judging me. I care when I haven't been in a while. Okay, you know when my con- when like I feel less confident. Confidence. Yeah. Yeah. So yeah. it's it's a confidence thing, and confidence, I think it, like there's almost like that effortless kind of. The effortless confidence, if okay. that makes sense. Like, yeah. you're not trying too hard. Yeah, you're just, you're just you're being you're you. You're good. Yeah. You know, there's no extra thought to it. Yeah. Okay, yeah, that makes sense. And I, I would definitely say I'm similar in that aspect. I think confidence is a huge thing. And I think the way to get over that is to have confidence in yourself. And I know it's easier said than done, obviously, right? It's like, like I say, I say this about so many things. If everybody had confidence, there would be no issues, you know, if... Everybody was happy. There would be no issues. Um, But that's not the case. And I think I've gotten to that point just by caring less. If that makes sense. Yeah, that's that's, that's essentially what I was trying to, to say. Yeah. I just stopped caring. You know, I used to give other people's opinions and thoughts so much power. And I realized I was doing that. And I'm like, why am I doing that? There's no reason for me to give them power. You know, in my head, I'm looking at it as them winning, so it comes back to that competitiveness, you know, but I say, why am I going to give them that power? They have nothing over me, right? They're not better than me. 
They can't beat me, you know, whatever. And this is, like I said, this is all me in my head. And why are they going to judge me, right? Who are they to judge me? Nobody's perfect. I'm very far from perfect. You're very far from perfect. Who are you, right? Who are you to say you're better than me? You're above me. You can make fun of me. You can't because I don't let you. I don't give you that power. You could say whatever you want. You could physically make fun of me, but the actual meaning behind it, it doesn't affect me. And that's just because I stopped giving it meaning. And not giving it meaning, how did you go about that? Because it's easy to wake yeah. up and just say, I don't care. Yeah. Right. But how do you actually not care? Yeah. Like, I, I mean, is, it an, is it something that you have to change about yourself or is it something that you just have to pay less? Is there like you pay less attention to people and what they're doing? Like, how did you go about that? Well, actually, this is a perfect topic for this, really. Failure. I saw people were failing me, right? I saw there were so many people around me that were failing me and, you know, promising these things and okay, yeah. all of these, yeah, promises that they would be making and none of them being fulfilled. So if everybody could go say whatever they want and have no sustenance and meaning behind it, why can't it be the same way for people who are going to say mean words and hurtful things, right? What's to say those two things aren't the same? If people are just saying words to say them, why aren't those mean and hurtful words the exact same things, those empty promises and those, you know, those things that were all promised? So that's kind of how I looked at it. I looked at it more in the aspect of over time, I saw people sometimes just say things to say them. So don't take everybody's words to heart because people like to just talk. People like to just say things to say them. So I stopped caring what people think, I guess, just over time and really seeing people for who they are, you know, and look, don't get me wrong. People that are close to me, I value their opinion. And if they're going to say something to me, I would take it to heart. But I guess I would say outside of my immediate group, you know, my family, my immediate and close friends, girlfriend, other than that, I really, it doesn't bother me. I don't care. You know, are are you similar in that aspect or is that something you're still trying to learn? Uh, It comes and goes sometimes. It's just like everything else. Yeah. You know, there's times that I care more about it. Um, There's times I care less. Yeah. It's a good feeling though. Yes. When you get to that point of like, I just don't care. Yeah. And um, you feel free. You feel yes. like there's a weight off your chest. And it gives you the ability to kind of focus on what's in front of you. Exactly. And you know, I think another reason I was able to do that was because of this. Because look, you know how many people are probably judging me right now for what I'm doing and saying, oh, he's not going to make anything. He's not going to become anything. I could easily let that bother me and you know be like yeah they're right i'm not gonna do it but it's not their vision exactly so what what is what do i care right like i'm happy doing this i love helping people i love talking to people and i love making a difference so what does it matter if they're gonna be like oh yeah no he doesn't he's not gonna be successful he can't do this he can't do that i really don't care anymore you know once i learned that that's when i was able to say okay I'm just going to do what I want and I'm going to be happy doing it. And that's all that should matter. It shouldn't matter if they're happy I'm doing it. It shouldn't be ma- ha- it shouldn't matter if they're mad I'm doing it. It should matter how I feel. Yeah. And I think a turn of that is like the idea of like, oh, well, if everyone around you disagrees with you on that, right? Then you're you probably what? Feel like you're going to be alone. Yeah. Right? Yeah. And that's a huge deterrent for people. Yes. You know, in that from that way of thinking at yeah. least. Yeah. And Look, the, that feeling of alone, nobody likes it, but... The right, the right people will come. Yes, and, and not will. even that. Like, of course they will, 100%. You will find your people, but the other thing with that that I've also learned, you have to learn how to rely on yourself and be comfortable with yourself because when I am alone, I don't care. Yeah. You know, that's another thing. Yeah. Like, I've always been a person who's super argumentative, you know, which I was always that kid where... My mom would be like, you can't do this. And I was like, why? And I would say, I can do this because of X, Y, and Z, right? I'm, they always used to call me the little lawyer or the little mayor because I wouldn't stop arguing everything. Um, but that also kind of gave me the confidence to be strong in my convictions now and 
if I am standing alone, that's fine. I'm going to back up why I'm standing alone and I'm going to back up my, my reasons, you know, and just yet again, it brings us back to that topic of confidence, being confident in what I'm doing and who I am. Yes. And sometimes in those moments where you're not, the only answer is to just do it. Yeah. Right? Because through the action of doing it or practicing doing it, you gain that confidence. Yeah. Right. And yes. sometimes when you're in that moment, you just become confident. Not, yeah. Not in the sense of like, oh, now I believe in myself, but it's it's more of like, a, okay, I either do this or I don't. Yeah. You know, and I'm going to try, so I might as well do it. Yeah, the exactly. Best I can. And the more you do it, the more you're going to train your brain to have that confidence and that belief in yourself. I wasn't always, you know, like that. I guess I've been like that for a long time. You know, I, I guess I, I don't want to say I've always been like that, but I've always believed in myself and believed, you know, my values and my visions. And I've tried to put them forth. Um, when I was younger, I would say I cared a lot more about what people thought. And so that would prevent me from doing things. And now that's kind of not an issue. I just do what I do and I do what makes me happy. And that's what helps my failure. You know, I look at failure as a lesson. I take every single time I fail and I learn and try to turn it into a victory. If that makes sense. Yeah. Normally with failure, there's a big lesson involved too. Which yeah. Is, if you learn to take those moments of failure as something positive, right, and you, you can reframe it as a win, right? It doesn't have to be a loss. You yeah. Know? It's, it's an opportunity yeah. to learn something about whatever you're doing, yourself, your activity, your job, whatever, the gym, yeah, you know, whatever it may be, or something you're trying to change within yourself. Um, those moments of failure are actually moments of feedback. Yes. You know? Exactly. Life's a lesson. Every, never every, ending lesson. Exactly. So you can either fight it or you can go with it and just try and better yourselves from all these lessons you're learning. Is there anything else you want to bring up or talk about? No, I think no? we covered it. Yeah, I uh, I think this was a really great episode. I think failure is something that we all deal with. And the importance of it is how we deal with it. If you guys have any questions, you could always reach out. Thank you guys again for another great episode. I appreciate all that you guys have been doing, all the comments and all the feedback. Please don't stop it. And yeah, we'll catch you guys next time. Thank you guys so much for listening. And don't forget to check out Dark Angel Company on Instagram at Dark Angel Co. and online at darkangelco.com. If you're interested in supporting and spreading awareness towards bringing light to a dark topic together, then tune in next time.